Okay, we are live, Robert. Uh, thank you all for joining this session and a warm welcome. Uh, this plenary will be looking at financial institutions for a new civilization. In this segment, we are going to discuss the necessity of reforming financial institutions in order to build a future where any entrepreneur can receive the help they need to make these institutions for a new civilization a reality. To take us through this is our moderator, Suresh Krishna, uh, Uno Social Business Fund Bangalore, who will introduce the speakers. Uh, we have a timer. Each speaker will have uh, six minutes, uh, five minutes speaking, and one minute for Q and A. Over to you, Krishna. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Robert. Uh, thanks, Lambia. Thanks, Professor Yunus. We have a fabulous fan panel today. All my good old friends uh, who've been uh, with us for many of them are very seniors to me, and in fact. Uh, I've learned a lot from many of them. I think uh, uh, Mr. Haikan, uh, uh, Mr. Shankarman, and uh, I think they all were very seniors. And I'm very happy to moderate this session for them. Uh, uh, for the general audience, I think we have a diverse community here. I mean, all the speakers come from various uh, uh, um, uh, sectors, uh, from uh, David from Zeron Communities, uh, Mr. Shankarman, uh, he is a chairman and a very veteran in the development sector. Uh, I think he, uh, and then Abdul Haikar, I mean, nobody, everybody knows him, but uh, he's the uh, managing director of the Grameen Trust. Uh, so Jean is the vice president of Eunice Center from Paris. Um, Jax uh, was the first one who started the uh, French Action Tank. I think he has so much of experience looking at many other sectors and many in, in institutions across uh, I think financial services, as you all know, is a very important uh, uh, institutions which make or break uh, institutions or uh, it uh, supports individuals to come up in life or it can actually bring them down too. Uh, I would like to just start with a small uh, story which I had experienced when we were doing financial services for the poor. I, we were like, as soon as we were doing microcredit program for many years, uh, I used to ask uh, many of our clients you know, why they, what, what were they doing before borrowing from microfinance institutions? I asked them, why are they not going to the banks? Why are they, because the banks are full of money, uh, why are they not going to the banks? I mean, many of them, most would say that, so they used to say, we don't have collateral to provide, we don't have track record to prove, and banks don't trust us. And they also say that banks want to support only people with uh, a lot of money. You know, and that's what they used to say. It was the more poor people. That was one experience when we said that banks are not really inclusive, but mostly uh, selective in their supporting uh, people. Similarly, in the recent past, I think I had one, one of our entrepreneurs whom we have actually funded, walked up to me and said, we want to raise more money um, but uh, I'm not getting support to raise more funds for our social business. I asked him, there are so many investment bankers around, but he's from Mumbai, by the way, I mean, which is the financial capital of India. Uh, I asked him, why, why there are so many people out there? Why are they not supporting? His response to me was very surprising. He came back, he told me, yes, all there are so many banks, there are so many investors, so many of them out there. Everybody is running behind supporting those big businesses which are going to be unicorns. I mean, they are not supporting uh, people who are really uh, working at the bottom of the pyramid or solving social problems. Most investors, equity investors, are talking about tens of millions of dollars, and I don't need so much of them to start off with. I just need probably a million dollars, and there is nobody to provide me. That's how they came back to our uh, fund, and we have supported them. But if you look at most of these financial institutions, there are multiple examples. Jax was talking about uh, housing for the poor, how it is difficult for the poor to even get any housing loans. So financial institutions are the backbone of supporting so many people, but, but they have been very selective. But uh, as we go forward with the way the world is going, I, those new, all these financial institutions require reforms and so that they can be more inclusive uh, or 
financial institutions need to become more poor uh, worthy. So that's what Proxy Jesus always says. So I think we have a fabulous panel who have experience. They will all talk about uh, their experience and how, what, according to their experience, what financial institutions should do. But before that, it will be nice for them to also talk about a minute or two about what they do so that the audience will get a context of what we are talking about. So um, over to you, I and mean, we can um, we can start with Mr. David from Devon Nadanon Communities. Over to you, David. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone, and happy birthday to you, Professor Yunus. Thank you. And very pleased, <laughs> very pleased to join this session for the first time uh, for myself. So in order to feed the uh, reflections on the needed evolution of financial institutions, I will take you quickly through Danone community's origins, some of our key learnings, and some hints on what we intend to do in the future. So first, why was Danone Community's fund created? 50 years ago, Danone's former CEO, Antoine Ribou, declared Danone's dual project, promoting the importance to consider at the same time economic and social aspects because there cannot be a prosperous economy without a social justice. Later on, Franck Ribou set Danone mission to bring health through food to as many people as possible. And after his encounter with Professor Yunus, Danone Communities Fund was created to support social businesses in order to prove that a more sustainable economic model is possible. So Danone Communities is an investment fund supporting social businesses focused on solving two problems, access to safe drinking water and malnutrition. And we invest at early stage to support them in scaling up and in reaching financial sustainability. So now some of our key learnings that give us confidence in a possible change. First, one of Danone community's objective is to involve various communities in social business space. And what we learned is that when you offer people as individuals to support social businesses, most people do it. Some examples, when Danone asked its shareholders to approve Danone's investment into Danone Communities Fund, a huge majority said yes. And it is how Danone Communities was able to start. When we propose Danone employees to invest part of their personal savings into Danone Communities, almost half of them do. And every year, more than 200 Danone employees take a pro bono mission on top of their daily job to support a social business on a specific topic. So individuals are willing to invest money and time to support businesses focused on solving social problems. A second key learning for us is that with patient capital, social businesses can scale up and become financially sustainable. Reaching financial sustainability is quite challenging for them as they are selling basic products to low income population. So they need to build very efficient operations and to reach scale to absorb fixed costs. And however, as of today, half of the 15, 15 social businesses we are supporting are financially sustainable or very close to it. And the other ones are profitable at gross margin level, but need more scale. On this aspect, we also learned that hybrid business models can be an efficient lever for social businesses to reach financial sustainability by addressing also consumers with higher income through specific channels. And last, a third learning for us, social businesses are resilient to crisis. And the social businesses we support resisted very well to the COVID crisis because they address basic needs that do not disappear when there is a crisis, and because they are agile and used to adapting constantly their business model. So these three learnings give us confidence that a change is possible and that the economy can evolve towards a better value sharing. Now, a few hints on what Danone Communities is intending to do in the future. So first, what we plan to do is very much in continuity with what we've been doing so far, but doing it bigger involving more stakeholders for Sorry. more impact. Super presence. No problem. Can I continue? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah. You take. Uh, yeah, so take. for more impact. So some specific areas of focus we have regarding our communities. We want to create more bridges 
between social businesses and Danone businesses. So they collaborate for more impact. And we want to cooperate with a wider community of investors for a bigger impact. And so on this aspect, after 15 years of supporting water access social businesses, Danone decided to join forces with other actors in this battle, financial institutions, corporates, foundations, investment funds. And so Danone allied with a, an impact fund, Incofin Investment Management, to sponsor the launch of the Water Access Acceleration Fund, the WAF. This will be an impact first fund dedicated to businesses providing affordable, safe drinking water. And the objective is to leverage the power of blended finance for impact, enabling various investors with different risk profiles to tackle together this mission of bringing safe drinking water for all. Thanks, David. So, so uh, that was the, uh, the main things I wanted to share today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. We will come back to you uh, later with the Q&A. Uh, Shankar, sir, uh, over to you. Yes. Good, good evening, friends and gentlemen and the ladies. Uh, uh, see, as you spoke earlier, we had, we too here in Nepal, experienced a lot of problems with the bank and the financial institution. They are more oriented towards the rich people and they don't believe in uh, lending to the poorest segment of the people. And even the youths have tough time to have a tiny amount of loan from them. So the banking institutions, they are groomed differently and they are uh, more and more commercial and profit oriented. And I would like to share some of our experiences uh, with uh, the microfinance institution. See, for, for narrowing down the gaps between the rich and the poor, I think the microfinance institution should play very critical role and uh, they did play in fact uh, we have about uh, uh, 40 years experience in microfinance and uh, they had uh, contributed a lot in reducing poverty and uh, unemployment still our poverty is uh, at the level of 18 percent and unemployment is also growing day by day so we have been discussing with the microfinance institution uh, to be uh, sensitive towards the um, problems faced by the community and to this effect and we have been discussing with the microfinance institution time and again and they have been uh, gradually uh, deviating from the original mission and the values and this is one crucial problem that we have been facing so we have been uh, trying to retrieve them to to stick to the uh, principal values and the culture that they had followed earlier so microfinance used to be a very uh, pivotal institutions in bringing uh, a kind of uh, socio-economic revolution in our rural society and uh, these days they are, they are becoming more and more commercial and especially because of the new act uh, which was uh, enacted some uh, 15 years ago and that act has pushed all the social uh, business oriented microfinance institutions to uh, to to get license under under this uh, bank and financial institution act 
that has led them to go uh, towards uh, the the uh, public committee public limited company and that has made them uh, led towards making money to please the uh, investor you know they 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 have become more and more uh, profit oriented and uh, that is one challenge that we have faced and uh, we have been discussing with the microfinance institution how to deprive this, deprive this. and uh, now uh, since the last social business uh, country forum that we held in uh, in in eleventh social business day we had uh, discussed among all the uh, stakeholders and uh, microfinance companies and uh, other service agencies and uh, we came to the conclusion that microfinance initiation should go for hard work for and they even decided to uh, eradicate poverty by the end of 2026 and uh, they have been now at uh, the entrepreneurship is the main problem and the biggest population of our young people have been out migrated so to retrieve that we we have been now uh, working with the microfinance institution to to educate them to step back and uh, give them easy access to credit so that they can start business of their interest business of their choice uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, small money, and also we have been now partnering with the schools and the colleges to and ask them to make uh, school and college uh, incubation center for entrepreneurship. And uh, many schools are have shown now to become uh, uh, um, entrepreneurship training center and uh, we have developed a kind of linkage with uh, microfinance initiation whoever have been passed out from the schools with entrepreneurship skills will be given easy access to uh, loan and uh, other support required so this way uh, we have been uh, trying to employ more and more youth so that uh, they be self employed and that they don't need to go abroad and the other side of um, our efforts is that we have been we have been now encouraging our microfinance institution to create self-reliant environmentally friendly villages uh, in their area of jurisdiction they have been doing that and they see if the country is facing problem of uh, over import and 90% uh, of uh, the food grains are imported from outside whereas some 30 years back we used to be an export country and now because of a lot of our people going abroad and more than uh, 200,000 hectares of land have remained barren so this is another challenge of our economy and that is where we have been sensitizing our microfinance initiation to play a role. So this is how we want to uh, have the young people more and more self-employed and uh, try, try to be self-reliant, uh, self-dependent and uh, stay back home. And uh, uh, we, we are, our microfinance initiation have now, uh, now working on reaching the uh, the hardcore poor, the absolute poor, so that the poor people be eradicated, be be out of poverty by the end of 2026. So this is some of the things that we have been trying to build up, and I feel that this will contrib uh, contribute to the new civilization that Professor Yunus has 
uh, brought out. And uh, we will work for that and our people are now committed and tomorrow we are having the country forum and the main issues that we will be discussing will be the concept of the 3-0 and uh, also about the 3-0 clubs and we, we have uh, so far more than 100 0 clubs been organized and uh, we found really we, uh, the young generation very uh, energetic, very insightful and very, uh, very uh, uh, eager to, to join the 3 0 club and they have already done many activities as well as, as, uh, as well because they have been they have been planting trees and they have been working for the drinking water and etc you know so many things depending on the local problem and the local needs so this is i, I think this concept of the new civilization is really uh, very interesting and uh, insightful and uh, our people have some great interest in this and uh, uh, they feel uh, very uh, interested uh, to work towards the, the line that Professor Yunus had set up in the name of this new civilization. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shankar. Um, Jack, so over to you. Yeah, good morning. Uh, I don't know if that's the morning. Good evening, everybody. Um, uh, just a few words to start with about uh, the structure I'm running. Action Tank is an incubator. It was uh, created uh, 12 years ago by Emmanuel Faber, the former CEO of Danone. Uh, this creation was inspired by uh, the work of Professor Yunus, but we wanted to think about how social business could be adapted to uh, a very different context. Uh, in France, and we wanted to incorporate the large corporation in, uh, in social business. Um, um, I would focus on the way large retail banks in France are uh, considering the poor consumer in France. Uh, so I, I am not going to talk about loan and that sort of thing, but more about the basic service that a, re, a large retail bank is, um, is offering to, to its client. For many, many years, um, as uh, Suresh said it in the introduction, the bank were very selective, meaning that they were much, much more interested in high net worth individuals because they could make more money with uh, uh, bank, uh, with their uh, uh, I mean, with that kind of clients. Ten years ago, the government um, asked the bank to identify among their customers who were what they called a fragile customer. So the, all the French bank had to identify by looking at the, you know, the money going through the bank account, they had to identify who were their uh, poor customers. Um, and and they, the government uh, imposed that to the bank. Uh, obviously, the bank would not have done that work uh, if not because of the governmental constraints. And the, and the new regulation. But when we start talking with the bank, they had made that work. So they were able to uh, identify the 100,000 or 200,000 of their customers, which had low revenue, low savings, and they could be considered as uh, poor uh, customers. And because of that prescription power, because they had identified those customers, we uh, started a work with all the French banks, or almost all the French banks, um, to provide, to convince those banks that they could uh, provide a much larger service to those customers. So we convinced them 
that they could propose to those customers um, some different services than the traditional, you know, uh, bank account management service, credit card management, etc. And so they have started two years ago um, uh, for those poor customers. Uh, they have started to, uh, to propose on uh, digital portals, uh, what we call inclusive, um, inclusive offer to have access to telecommunication, to have access to insurance, different products that we had developed with other large corporations, um, and they, they started to do it. So, um, in a way, it's it's uh, it's really a, a, a disruptive. It's very different from what they used to do uh, fifteen or twenty years ago. Where uh, during, I mean, at that period, they were trying more to to refuse those uh, type of clients because they could not make uh, enough money with them. They could not sell them, you know asset management uh, product, et cetera, et cetera. So they were neglected customers. Um, and we, uh, we have started a process where those banks are not looking at the profitability, the potential profitability they could make with those clients, but they are trying to increase the money left in the bank because they will, by offering them those inclusive offer on telecommunication and other pre-engaged expenses, uh, they are uh, helping those poor, poor customers to have more money at the end of the month than they used to have previously. So they are going out of their traditional scope because they are not promoting financial or insurance products or asset management product. They are promoting baby food inclusive offer, uh, like the, the program we have developed with Danone. They are promoting an, an inclusive offer of, of uh, internet at home that we have developed with the larger uh, telecommunication operator in France. They are promoting um, uh, uh, um, an offer to have access to a new car, even if you are a poor customer uh, that we have developed with uh, the larger uh, French car manufacturer. And they even are helping those customers to detect some social welfare system that they, they are eligible to, but they, that they did not know of. So they are helping those poor customers in a much wider range of services than they used to do, not looking at the profitability of those programs, but just looking at how to increase the kind of service I can give to those uh, poor customers to help them not to go into, you know, not sp spiraling into debt, uh, et cetera, et cetera, because they have, uh, they have uh, realized that it, that it was part of their social responsibility. So just uh, in a nutshell to, to summarize, first it happened because the government did something at some point. So the regulation is very important. And uh, in France, we have a strong regulator that created the conditions. But secondly, we can see during the last 10 years, we can see that the way the large retail bank in France were looking at their poor customers, this look has changed dramatically. So I think this is a, a, a move toward a more... Uh, New, a new, more civilized world. Yes, Suresh. Thank you, Jack. Um, I'll move on to next uh, speakers. Uh, uh, I just want to um, alert you all because I was asked by the organizers that we don't, we have started late and we are running out of time. So, Mr. Haikan, I think probably we'll have to cut your time a little bit. Uh, maybe in three minutes, if you can actually uh, make your presentation. I'm sorry, but. Uh, uh, I hope you can do it. Okay, no problem. Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening from Bangladesh to everyone. So, if we uh, look into the financial current financial institutions, we can see 
profit maximizations and they give more focus to the people, those who have more. Uh, in this circumstances, unemployment and poverty uh, is significantly increasing and poverty is not reducing as per the plan of particular country or as per the as disease. So current financial system, uh, especially for the rural poor uh, and unemployed young is not allowed to getting financial services as they don't prove their capability and uh, high credit uh, score uh, uh, and not offering any collateral, what already mentions. So now questions, considering the situations, uh, 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 we can say that everybody can rethink to redesign the current financial systems and take initiative to establish new financial systems which will build the new civilizations. Then question how we can do it. So on the basis of our experiences, we can say there are many ways to build new financial institution for new civilizations. Especially the government already and corporate houses, foundations, NGOs, individuals, private sectors can create social business venture capital fund and to address, to address the various social problems. We in, in Bangladesh, there are many Grameen companies created social business venture capital fund and three Grameen company, we created venture capital fund to focus the zero unemployment and provided the investment to the unemployed young to start new business or to expand their very tiny business. And now this is very successful program in our country. And we have already replicated this program in Kosovo and Yemen also. And they have created more jobs for others also as well as self-employment. Another way, you know what Mr. Shankarman has said, microfinance is a very powerful tool to fight against poverty. But now most of the MFIs have mission dipped. In terms of focusing the poorest of the poor, they are now, that their motive is now profit maxim maximizations. So MFI should rethink about the services, redesign their program to mitigate the uh, global warming and uh, provide the microfinance, uh, promote low scale clean energy, uh, biofuels, solar energy, uh, and engage in carbon, carbon credit projects also. And they have also uh, provide the, there should be a combination of financial and non-financial services also. And MFI can also promote targeted loans to the hybrid uh, clients for the uh, effect of the climate change and to resist the crops of alternative uh, uh, interest rate also. And we have one example. We have established one microfinance organization in Shandu, Autonomous Province of China. And it's, it's a microfinance, but following the principle of social business. 99% shareholder become the, becomes to Grameen Trust, 1% going to one local and Chinese NGO. And the seven principles clearly mentioned on this program also. So this is also another way. NGO and foundation just uh, are the products of current civilizations, you know, and they are, they are doing very excellent jobs around the world, no doubt at all. But however, I think uh, uh, the, uh, it, it seems to be like a social business, but uh, they are not formed as a social business company. They don't take profit, but, but they, they don't give dividend, but uh, they, they are not forming, following the principle of social business. So you can easily say that the NGOs can transform, MFI can transform into a social business company 
from the foundation or NGOs, uh, which will be fit for the new civilization also. And I think all human being think and come forward to build a financial institution for new civilization. It is, it is possible. However, I think the main rules should be played by the government as because they have funds and all other logistical arrangements also. And uh, uh, time is very running out. I hope if everybody should take responsibility to build a new civilization for new institution, it could be possible. And if we will be achieve three two goals of Professor Yunus, I think if we will implement the three zero around the world, that should be a new civilized society will be established. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Icon, for sticking to the time. So thanks very much. Uh, and I'll, without delay, pass on Mr. Jean to make his presentation. You mean myself? Yes, yes, please. Oh, sorry, Jean-Luc. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, uh, good evening, everybody. So maybe let me just first uh, say a few words about this wording, a new civilization. I think it's important uh, to say what we mean by these words. Uh, we see many signals of a new civilization emerging based on emotion and empathy instead of authority and rationality. A new civilization organized through horizontal networks have a van based on hierarchy and uh, uh, top-down approach. A civilization of solidarity between human beings rather than of competition between human beings. And last but not least, a civilization of full respect of nature instead of a civilization which makes war to nature. So this new civilization is, not, uh, is emerging now uh, and developing uh, worldwide, but it's not decided by law, uh, nor by a decree isu issued from the top. It's underway as a silent, slow, but powerful metamorphosis, I would say, to use the word of a French sociologist, Alain de Vulpian. In this new civilization, there is no place for casino finance aimed to greedy speculation and indecent gains by a handful of golden boys. In this new civilization, there is no place for the crypto money, which have no social utility and a maximum uh, impact on climate warming. In this new civilization, there is no place for the huge and from time to time bureaucratic banking groups inherited from the past which are still working according to the old hierarchical principles other than as uh, proximity in a proximity approach. So in this new civilization, for sure, we, knew, we need new banks. We need uh, banks close to the people, protecting their savings, providing them uh, loans adapted uh, at affordable conditions to, to address their uh, investment projects. We need social business banks belonging to the poor to serve the poor, like Grameen Bank. I've been working for 80 years as a, a managing director of Grameen Credit Agricole Foundation. We were teaming up with Grameen Trust in order to extend, develop, uh, uh, support the development of microfinance institutions in developing countries. So Credit Agricole, the bank, it's the largest bank in France, by the way, uh, decided uh, to establish this foundation and to endow it with 50 million euros in order to uh, support the development of microfinance institutions in the poorest countries. And what we did in about 30 different countries for, uh, I did that for eight years. Uh, I am no longer in charge, so I will not elaborate about that. Uh, we need also venture capital funds dedicated to provide seed capital and subordinated loans to finance startup companies created by innovative young entrepreneurs. But I would like to pass a message that we will not do that alone, that we have to rely on uh, many things which are existing, which are uh, more or less aligned with the same objective. We are uh, looking for the same purpose. And in France, we inherited from the past uh, a strong social economy with cooperatives, mutuals, foundations, associations. I'm too short of time to go into the details, but uh, for sure, 
there, there are some very interesting and inspiring models to take from this tradition. On top of the cooperatives and mutuals inherited from the past, and in France, uh, the, last, uh, the vast majority of banks are in the form of cooperatives, by the way, uh, the, the, there were some innovative, uh, innovative uh, approaches which have been developed in France to serve people who are excluded from the conventional banking and financial system. I would like, would like to just to mention in the field of microcredit the role of ADI. ADI means Association for the Right to uh, Economic uh, Economic Initiative, which was created by Maria Novak, a close friend and fan of Professor Yunus. It was created 30 years, 30 years ago, and it provides more or less 40,000 loans to people every year, to people who are excluded from the conventional banking system. I could also mention something you maybe don't know, France Active, which provides guarantees to young entrepreneurs who have no credit score, no credit history, no collateral to present to the bank. So France Active provides them with a guarantee. And they did that. They, they provided 5,000 guarantees last year to such young entrepreneurs. But they also provide seed capital to help young entrepreneurs to develop their own companies or their startup. And they established a 10 million euro seed capital fund last year just for this particular purpose. I would like also to mention uh, there is some, something which is very specific to France, which is uh, the, the solidarity driven savings of the people and of the employees. And uh, maybe David mentioned that, by the way, uh, people and employees in a company can allocate their savings, their bonuses. Uh, their share in the net profit of the bank or the company to special solidarity driven funds. Or they can subscribe savings book and give up the remuneration of a savings book in favor of association, NGO, etc. Just remind the figure today, the outstanding amount of this solidarity driven savings is 25 billion euro. It increased by 26% last year, which means 5 billion euro additional. And a part of this money, about 700 million euros, are invested in social businesses like the ones, like Danone communities, like the project supported by uh, the foundation, Garmin Critical Foundation. And there is a, 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 an entity called FAIR, F-A-Y-R, which provides a label for such uh, solidarity and social driven uh, products. So I will not go into more details. We also had recently a new uh, regula law, legal regulations, one for uh, social businesses, uh, the law adopted in July 2014. Uh, and today there are nearly uh, uh, 1,000 companies which adopted the new statute decided by law. And also more recently, the pact law adopted in France three years ago created an hybrid concept of mission-driven companies. Uh, it's not a social business, for, to be quite clear, it's a hybrid. These companies are supposed to take into account in the same, uh, same uh, way the, the profit for, from the business and the social mission. And by the way, Danone has been uh, the first listed company to adopt this mission-driven company statute. Okay, I stop there. Uh, I think uh, all these uh, things are going in the, to a good direction, in the direction of a new civilization, and it gives up, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know whether we have time for questions because we're already running out of time because I was asked to close by 9.10. I think we're almost uh, all short that by five minutes. Uh, just to summarize, I would just like to summarize and if, we, if the organizers give us time, we can take questions. I think there was a lot of new thoughts which came in. I think I just want to just take one minute and do a summary of the whole uh, presentation by all my fellow panelists. I think one key message is which I, I thought of, which I note, noted down is everyone should take responsibility for creating new financial institutions for the new civilization. And that is possible. That was one strong message which I I could hear from most of the uh, people. Uh, most uh, said that, you know, we are, whatever we are doing already, we can do much bigger and uh, we can do more of that is uh, a message. 
joining hands and collaborating was uh, was one of the highlight of the presentation today if we join hands with more and more financial institutions probably we can join forces and solve many problems uh, financial institutions need to be sensitive to the problems of the community that uh, is very important then only they'll be able to create appropriate products i think most of the panelists did also talk about creating supporting self employment uh, uh, and supporting new entrepreneurs by creating various kind of support mechanisms like specialized venture funds for uh, uh, supporting self employment guarantee funds uh, or seed capital funds or also provide them non financial support other than financial support so that they can succeed much better the importance of government policies and government support was highlighted by most of the panelists i think that makes uh, a big deal of uh, ensuring that the new the financial institutions are going to be pro poor inclusive and not exclusive the way they are instead of being profit maximizing they can be uh, more supportive of uh, uh and the poverty and the poor and excluded uh, groups in in the society i think government uh, plays an important role that was one of the highlight uh, <clears throat> um oh one other point which also came up was ngos can actually who have been doing a lot of work in the development sector can also think about transforming themselves into social businesses specialized funds uh, to provide uh, capital to social businesses and uh, youth to start businesses was also highlighted and also i think last uh, not the least mission driven companies uh, should become should be recognized by various stakeholders so that they'll be encouraged to uh, continue their uh, solving problems for the society i think various other components had come in apart from this i think that i thought these were the highlights of all, all our panel discussions uh so i thank all my panelists for being uh, supporting me in actually trying to conclude this on the on the time and this was the message by all our panelists there is a lot more to say by everybody but unfortunately we have only so much time i thank you very much in case you organizers give us a little time we can take questions um professor you have anything to add no it's it's a great session uh, thank you very much the time pressure is there so we'll move on thank you for your contribution very effective discussion thanks a lot thank you very much one Bye. thank you picture thank just you. one picture time yes lamia you were saying something just picture. one photograph one photograph yes please thank you thank you thank you very much thank you thank very much look okay, forward to you thank you bye have a good day have a good night bye bye